Welcome to the Delling Pod, and we've got a guest who will be familiar to many of you. Back for his third time, Tommy Robinson. Welcome back. Lots happened. <laughs> so much has happened since. Can I just say how pissed off I am actually to have you on the on the podcast because every because you're you're very interesting and you always get lots of enthusiasm from from the listeners. But every time I feel like I'm sort of kissing another bit of my career goodbye. Mm. I mean, it's you're, you're toxic, aren't you? Toxic, Tommy. You are toxic. I call myself. I say to I say to people when I meet them before they put something up. Or I say, listen, people call me toxic, Tommy. So whatever, if you're about a broadcast, support for me. Yeah. Be careful. I just, I just think that I'm a journalist, doing his job, basically. That that. Almost nobody is is giving you a fair hearing right now, and I'm ashamed of 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 the media. It seems to me, and I could be wrong. I mean, maybe you are a complete racist bastard, thug, whatever. But it seems to me that that you are the national scapegoat. This is the rerun of. This is exactly the same as when I went, when I was put in prison. All of the media, all of them rounded on each other and bent over backwards against each other to who could who could write the justification piece for why I should be in prison yeah even though it was proven by the highest judge in the land that I should not have been in prison even though everything they did was unlawful and illegal and I was released from prison for those reasons none of them corrected that none of them even reported that yeah now they're all doing the same now with the removal of my of me from social media there's anyone who listens to the reasons they're given for my removal that I said, behead those who follow the Quran. Yeah. If I said that, I would have been arrested. Every journalist in this country would have run that story. The, the media, who are all ready to pounce on every word I say, yeah. if I said any word that was incitement at all, I'd have been thrown in jail for it. The, the truth is, lies are currently being spread by every single media, and all of the journalists who are reading those lies, they know I haven't said that. They all know I haven't said that. It's funny that... I think that they want to believe two things simultaneously, which which cannot both be true. So um, it's all about the narrative, isn't it? It's a, the narrative is that, that that Tommy Robinson is a is a racist, Islamophobic, if you believe that word, um, thug, and you incite violence. And but when what? you ask them for evidence of it, there is none. Th- well, exactly, there is none. And then the, the crazy thing is. The crazy thing is, it's like in in the last twelve months. So currently now, yeah, I can be removed from PayPal, from Twitter, from Facebook, now from Instagram. Um, what will be next? Will it be my bank accounts and my phone numbers? Will, will the phone lines refuse me? Now, so I can be removed from society. Yeah, I've not broke one law. I've committed no crime. I've never, ever, ever been arrested on anything to do with racism, extremism. Um, hatred, never been arrested under any this, of those laws. This is why. This is why. And we have stringent laws in this country. We have serious laws, where if you say something that you shouldn't, you will be arrested. And trust me, I would be arrested if I said something unlawful. Yeah. The fact is, I've said nothing unlawful. This is wrong. Think, it's legal what I say, it's truthful what I say, but we currently live in a in a, in a period where the truth is seen as hate speech, and people are being silenced for that reason. Yeah. Well, I'm I'm pissed off. I'm pissed off that that, that, that you exist and that you that you, you are toxic, Tommy, and that and that I have to kind of so ruin I, my only life. toxic Tommy mm. in the media. Yeah. So I always say to anyone, if you spend one day with me, and we go to any town you want, yeah, and we walk through that town, you'll see the reception I receive. It's and you know, I see that every day. So I tell my, you, from, I don't I don't feel down. I tell you, who'll hate this comparison, but I'm afraid it's true. Um. Nigel Farage is another person who gets a he's toxic in the media he's he gets a he gets a very rough rough ride and whenever you're out with him on the streets outside a pub or whatever people are coming up to him and say oh Nigel it's great and and, and I've I've seen that with you as well I've seen that with you people you're loved you're loved by a, by a even, significant even if you look when I went up to Scotland to to find that McDonald or whatever his name was the MP Every single person, they stop their cars, they come out. They didn't just, it, I don't just get a sense of, um, hello, how are you doing, Tommy? I yeah. get real passion. Yeah. I draw passion from people. 
yeah. in their feelings and their emotions and how, and it's really and, and it's that connection I my Facebook profile was the most engaged in this country if you look at the comments if I'd done a live stream I'd have 20,000 people live straight away and I'd have 10,000 comments within 20 minutes those would go on to have millions of views the engagement was above the Labour Party, the Conservative Party, Jeremy Corbyn, Theresa May, any of them, any of them. And that's what they didn't like. And this is politically driven. This is about silencing dissident voices. That's all this is about. This isn't about hatred, because if it was about stopping hatred, I'd have been arrested under hatred crimes. Yeah. This is about policing the internet for any opposition to what I'd call a globalist plan, what I'd call uh, open borders, mass migration, the Islamization of this country. They want it completely unchallenged. And they don't want people awake or hearing or seeing what the consequences of those policies are. Yeah. Because they benefit the people who are organising this. They benefit the people in government, the hierarchy, the, the top end of society. And, uh, and it's affecting us at the bottom. And they, and they don't even want us now to be able to talk about that. Yeah. It's not, just, it's not just that they're silencing me. That's why it, this isn't just about removing Tom Robson. This is about removing the 1.1 million people that were following engagement with me. It's about removing their opportunity to hear and see what's going on. Yeah. That's what this is. So those 1.1 million, how would you describe them? Are they mainly white working class? I'd say, yeah. Yeah, they would be majority working class people, yeah. Right. And in uh, geographically spread... Geographically spread all, all, all across England, yeah. Mm. In fact, I, I think 70 to 80% of that following is in the UK. I have, a, I have a good following in America and Australia. Funny enough, I have a big following in India. Do you? Yeah. I what? get so much support from Tell India. me about your Indian. What's that about? I get so much support from India. I think if I could actually know that if I went to India, if I toured India, I think I'd sell out huge arenas. You well, know, what, why do you get that? Have you been to India? No, I, I had a meeting recently with um, with a representative of... RSS is it one of the major political groups out there? Don't know. To, to talk about bringing me over there, yeah. So even the Hindu groups, Tapan Ghosh, I've had meetings with theirs. Every time we've tried to do something, I was due to, to talk with Dr. Swami. Dr. Swami is massive in America, in India. Right. But again, these groups that police who can talk and who can't talk attacked the Hindu temple that I was due to be speaking at. Right. They, and then they were too scared, so they withdrew the invite. It's basically. And, and all of this has happened. All of this has happened within 24 hours of me, of me releasing Panodrama. So this, this deletion... Panodrama, for those... I, I, I can't imagine there's anyone listening to this who hasn't heard of, of Panodrama. But this is your, your sting operation, your counter-sting operation. Panorama, the BBC's flagship documentary, yep. tried to do a hit job on you. And it was going to be a hit job, wasn't it? It's clear as day. And the thing is, John Sweeney, this is what... Gets me. He's their reporter, their chief He's reporter. their main reporter. He's the face of Panorama. He was lying. He said he'd clip footage. He said he would make an innocent disagreement with a female. Yep. He said he would make it into a sexual thing against Tommy Robinson. It's all on camera. He was also homophobic. He was also racist. He was a bigot. All of that in one conversation. Yeah? Mm. He's still in his job. Why is he still in his job? Within the BBC, you cannot have a main face representative when, if you read the guidelines, it says that our presenters are the voice of the BBC. Yeah. That, that, that's their guidelines. Now, what he says and done in that documentary that I aired is appalling. In fact, it's far worse than anything I've said in my life. Yet I am put forward as this hate figure, and John Sweeney's a man putting me forward as the hate figure in the documentary. So what is the... If you had to, if if you were constructing a case against Tommy Robinson, yep. Um, what are the worst things that you've done? That yeah, I'm, got I'm, you? I'm very open about it. Always, okay. well. I'm, I'm, I'm not. I'm like just, an just, open book. Yeah, give me this. Because so, some, because somebody the other day said to me, I was, I was saying that why aren't we, you know, we should, we should be, we should be, giving him a fair hearing, and this person said, yeah, but he's a criminal, and I said, well, I mean, so was Nelson Mandela. Technically, <laughs> but, but when they say uh, he, he's a criminal, I'd say technically you are. I mean, you, no, you're I've, convicted. I've been, I've been in prison, yeah. But at the same time, I'd say you are a, you're a product of, of of how how you're brought up and where you're brought up. Yeah, I'm from Luton Town. Yeah, Luton Town is the most deprived and roughest town in Britain. Voted right. voted that. Voted yeah. as that. Um, I'm from 
a community that has huge problems in it. Yeah, whether it be I'm not on about Islam. I'm not about crime, gun gun crime. There's been 30 shootings in six months in my town. Yeah, there's so growing up around all of that. I managed to when people say he's a thug. If I was the thug that they say I am, yeah. Then when people come up and you clearly see so many videos of people confronting me and being very aggressive and actually violently attacking me, I'm not on the count foot. I'm always only acting defence. So, yeah, and I hold my hands up to things I've done in my past. I was put in prison for my first ever event offence at the age of 20, 20 years old. Yeah. I studied for five, five years as, as an aircraft engineer. Went to jail when I was 21 um, for assault on an off-duty police officer. And I talk openly about that. Yeah. And when I come out of prison, I then got involved in the football, the football scene. I didn't have a career then. Yeah. I've had a, few, a couple of mad years there, which I speak openly and honestly about. Yeah. And, it, and it's that background, and it's that background that would be, which is why I didn't remain silent, which is why I wasn't intimidated in silence, which is why the first time I had my head kicked in, I didn't run away and hide. It's why, so I say you have to take the good with the bad. Yes. And the, man, and the man I am at 36 years old as a father of three is a very different man to who I was when I was 21, 22, 23 years old. That's quite interesting you, you, you say that. The, the, do, you think it, do you think that what you learned on the football terraces uh, is, is why, you, why now you won't back down? It, it was never going to be a female school teacher that took on Islam in Britain. Right, yeah. That's the reality. It was never going to be because they'd be too scared to. Yeah. Everyone's too scared to. Even many football hooligans are too scared to take it on. So essentially, I, I was scared. When I started the English Defence League, I used a different name and I wore a mask because I was scared. I still get scared now. To say it would be ridiculous to say I don't. In fact, at times I'm terrified of what's, ha what's going to happen, how it's going to happen, what, what's going to happen with my family, all of those things. But... I'd say, or in fact, I, f I felt like saying it to John Sweeney. When John Sweeney said to me, I have something in common with Tommy Robinson. It's the sc his scumbag Irish background. Mm. My scumbag Irish background, my great granddad won a medal of bravery from the French, a medal of honour, that only a handful of people have got, got. One of those was Churchill, the other one was Roosevelt. And my great granddad got that. Now, What is it in, in the trenches? Yeah, my great granddad's brother was shot dead in 1919 in the Easter Uprising. So I'd say... Who what, was he? What this... Um, my great-granddad fought for the Ulster Regiment. But I'd say what they're struggling so much to deal with is actually in our DNA. It's a resistance to when we see something's wrong. And what's happening to our country, and every, I'd say every British and Englishman has it and will find it. And that's what you're witnessing. You're witnessing a resistance. It's a resistance to an agenda that is actually the biggest threat that this country's faced. It's a threat. Our culture and our identity and our future is in the big. Is in the most. Is in the. Is in. Is is really in danger, and that's not just here. That's across Europe and the whole entire West. Yeah. With what's happening, now we can be cowards, or we can speak honestly and openly. Yeah. And what I'd say is that. And I've witnessed it, in fact. Yeah. From speaking out when I started, people used to give me a hard time. I used to get spat. I'd get abused when I'm walking around the streets. I now get heroes reception everywhere I go. Right. So I know I'm on the right side of history. I know I am. And I know that the only... Like, this country is primed and ready, I'd say, for a political revolution in the, fe in the feeling amongst people. People know what's happening is wrong. You saw with... Whether it be in India with Modi when he was elected, then in America with Trump, most recently in Brazil. Yeah. All of these elections, Italy with La Liga, Austria, all across Europe, people are revolting yeah. against, whether it be the status quo, what I'd say is the establishment. Yeah. The establishment are being replaced in certain countries. Look what happened in Italy. That's unheard of. 20, that's unheard of to, to swing from a left wing government to completely kick them out of power yeah. and replace them with people who are solely against the government yeah. and that's the mood of feeling that I'd say is, is primed in this country yeah. it's an anti-establishment it's not just about Islam it's about so many things that people can see are under attack 
free speech is under attack. We, I've said for many years we live in a post-free speech era. We don't have free speech. I soon will be erased from everywhere. I expect everywhere. What sort of society is that if I haven't broke one law? What sort of equal playing field is that if Hamas and Hezbollah and prescribed terrorist organisations that are friends with the, the, the opposition party in our country, they still have all these social media platforms. Yeah. They still use them. Terrorists, the, the man that says he sat down with Facebook in order to get me removed, yeah. Mohammed Shafiq. Mohammed Shafiq was close with Nick Clegg in the Liberal Democrat Party. Nick Clegg is now in charge of communications for Facebook and Instagram. It's Nick, Nick, it would have been Nick, Nick Clegg's decision who removed me from those, from those groups. After sitting down with Mohammed Shafiq, Mohammed Shafiq is a Muslim who shares a platform and, and has promoted radical Islamic clerics who call for ma the murder of Muslims for blasphemy. He actually incited murder against Majid Nawaz. These are the people that are sitting down with these big tech giants in order to silence any opposition of their, of their flawed flawed um, ideology. I just think that anyone who's silent on this, this isn't going to stop at Tommy Robinson. In fact, it didn't stop at Tommy Robinson. The same day they removed Tommy Robinson, they removed Raheem Kassan, they re removed Brian of London. I don't know if you know Brian of London yeah, yeah. in Israel, he was removed. These are all people who have broke no rules. I know. No crimes. What, okay, that, that really inflammatory line, behead those um, who follow Islam. Um, Surely, do you not have a legal case against against Facebook for claiming that you said that? We have. We're currently just talking with the Middle East Forum and are hoping that they're going to um, support a case in America against Facebook. Because yeah, because look, they're lying. I think so that when you say have a case, just so we know, just so people realise, <laughs> when I was in prison, I had a lot of money donated to me, yeah. which I said I was using for a legal fund. Yeah. In the last month, I've spent £30,000. Yeah? I'm taking the Times newspaper. The Sunday Times, I'm taking to court. They're aware of this. They've all been served notice. Right. The Socialist Worker Party, The Guardian, the Crown Prosecution Service. I have a tri All of these are, I've, I've, I've served notice on. I'm taking Cambridgeshire Police to court on the 12th of March for the harassment of my children. Yeah. So... Yes. And, and then Eve, I've got another four cases which I should be taken to court. The prison authority, I should be taken to court for the way they treated me and how I yeah. was held. All of these things. Do you know how much it costs when you sit down? So when I sat down... With lawyers. <laughs> oh, my God. Man. Yeah. How, does, how are you meant to do it? How can you afford to do it? Do you know, like, I sat down and said about this case, what, what's the worst outcome if I lose this case? Yeah. Because bearing in mind, it's a judge that makes the decision. Yeah, yeah. Is a judge going to rule on me? When Judge Marson put me in prison against every single rule going in the book, he yeah. just still stuck me in prison. Will a judge side of me? Will they side on the right side of the law? Now, if they don't, how much is it going to cost? £150,000 a trial. Yeah. Is it like, like currently, for my case against Cambridgeshire Police, which starts on the 12th of March, they've said that their costs are going to be £50,000. Yeah? So if I lose, I have to pay mine and then I have to pay yeah. their fifty. Yeah, yeah. Now, they put that cost on my solicitor said, that's simply to try and deter you from going through with this. Right. Then they've been offering me out of court settlements. They've offered, Cambridge Police have already offered me two out of court settlements. I don't want their out of court settlement. What I want is, a, is proof mm. that they targeted my children in order to affect me, which is what they did. Anyone who can see this video, if you go on YouTube, put in Tommy Robinson Kids, Tommy Robinson Cambridge, you'll see a video where I'm enjoying, I'm enjoying I'm, it's like I'm sitting here with you, James. Yeah. I'm with my children in a pub and minding my own business. Officers come in and say, you have to leave this pub now. I said, what do you mean I have to leave this pub? They said, if you don't leave this pub and leave this city, we will arrest you. And you can watch the video. It's unbelievable. And I say, I'm here with my children. What are you talking about? And they say, are you going to leave the pub? Are you going to leave the pub? And then he starts getting all... And I said, no, I'm not going to leave the pub. What, what, why would I... I'm, I'm, I'm not doing nothing wrong. I'm breaking no crime. Yeah? I'm breaking no law. What law? Under what law are you telling me I have to leave? And they say under some... And they read some section... Section 7 order or something. Which is for football hooligans. Right. Yeah? I said... I'm here with my children. They're seven, nine. At the time, they were six, eight, and ten years old. And I'm with my two other... I've got my friend's children. We've been to the fair. We've just walked into the pub with candy floss. What are you talking about? Yeah. They then persisted in making me leave the pub where my children are hysterical and screaming. I didn't mention a word of... Then they wouldn't just make us leave the pub. They followed us 
on with a with a recording camera. Yeah. So much so that my youngest tried to run in front of the road, nearly got hit by a bus because she was terrified. Yeah. My youngest daughter has never come to football again since that day, and that's what I'm taking them to court for. Well, I, I my, Saturdays was my day with my children, like that's my time yeah. to have an extra bond with my children, and I take my children with my friends and their children. I take them to watch football wherever it is. But I used to do that with all three of my children. Since that day, that's two years ago, my youngest has never been back to football. She's too scared to go to football. What's your case against the Cambridge Piss? What, what, what's your... Uh, my case is harassment and... Unlawful, harassment. Uh, harassment and when you watch the video, yeah. when anyone watches the video, there's no justification for what they're doing. Sure, no, I, 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 and, I And I they're saying you, you have to leave the city. What for? Right. Like, what sort of... If we're in a society... Where because of my political beliefs, yeah. because of nothing I've done, I, me and my family can be forcefully removed from an entire city, not because of anything I'm doing, not because of the threat I am, then how is that? What, what is that? that? That's not Britain. I no. said we live in, the, that's not freedom and democracy and rule, rule of law. This is harassment and persecution by the police. Because of my political beliefs. That's what this is. And if this, this would happen to a minority family, yeah. the whole country, when you hear, you can watch the video and hear my children, I can still, it still winds me up now. I wanted to go the next day. I found out where the police officer lived who'd done it. And I wanted to go onto his house roof and play a PA system of my children crying because it ate me up so much. Because what I was supposed to do, you know, the thug that everyone says I am, yeah. I should have leveled the bloke for what he'd done to my kids. That's what they wanted me to do. Of course, yeah, yeah. That, that it was provocative, purposely provocative. And anyone, if, if you have your children, anyone who puts your children in that situation where they scare, intimidate, and actually terrify your children, they should not be in a position where they can do that. Yeah. And that's what I'm taking them to court for. But even taking them to court for that so far, I've spent £20,000. Yeah, yeah. So it's just... You've only, you've only got to win one of them, though. To, uh, to, I'll, to, I'll, to I'll win... Uh, the Sunday Times the Sunday Times they've already retracted and put a retraction to what they said um, the Guardian journalist just four days ago I, I sent an, I sent a legal letter to the Guardian yeah. their journalist said that I'm an anti-Semite these are just lies there is no evidence to this whatsoever in fact I'm a, I'm a if anything I, I'm labelled and, and called a Zionist I'm, I'm, a, I'm one of the most vocal voices for Israel yeah. Yeah. I've been there you've been to Israel yeah. I've yeah. been to Israel it's, it's a beautiful country I've, I've, um, I see the, the, the sad state of affairs for Jewish people in this country and, and in Europe and the persecution they're facing currently just because of being Jews so there's, there's not one single bit of evidence to say I'm an anti-Semite the, the Socialist Workers Party I've just sent legal letters on them they are promoting that I'm a Nazi I'm not. So I made the. Oh, we're all, we're all Nazis we're now. We're all Nazis, but yeah. uh, there comes some point yeah. when these lies have an effect. For example, I was just talking to you before we started talking about the problems my children are having at school. Yeah. Where they're, where they're being called Nazis, where they're being violently attacked. Yeah. They're nine. They're nine. They're my, boys, my son's nine years old. Yeah. This comes from lies. I wouldn't mind if he was being attacked because of his dad's opposition to Islam. Yeah. yeah? He's being attacked for complete falsehood lies. Yeah. Fake lies spread by a corrupt media yeah. about me and it has an effect so now I, so then i've made the decision we, that is i'm going to fight them now and i'm going to take them through the courts and yeah. i'm going to prove their lies well i think you have to in a way and, and you have to, just going back a bit to that battle you described between the globalists for want of a better word the united nations with its migration compact and you're right about the death of the slow strangulation of free speech by the the kind of Silicon Valley and, and by the authorities generally. Um, one of the things we rely on in situations like that is our legal system, don't we? I mean, English common law is the envy of the world and the rule of law is, is what makes countries happy to do business with us and, and makes Britain a desirable place to live. So we've got to rely on the fact that still within the judiciary are people like the recorder, for example, the recorder of London. I was at the Old Bailey to watch him give his opinion on whether you should carry on being imprisoned or not. Yeah, but you say, like, I have no faith in that either. He had no choice but to do that. No, no, I know what I'm saying is... I thought you know he, what he done? He still he sent was, me back to prison. He was prison. good, wasn't he? Yeah, but he still sent me back to prison. Did he? So even after he heard everything, yeah. he knew it was unlawful. Yeah. I was still put back in prison for two weeks while he made his mind up. And it was left until the very last day before I was released. So I was put on solitary confinement for a further two weeks. Yeah. Even though he'd heard the whole case. So he, uh, he heard the case. Right. And what my, my lawyers kept saying to me, you're getting out. Right. Because 
it's all unlawful. Yeah. And once this is, and what the only way we played it, yeah. is we didn't tell them that we were appealing the the conviction. We only said we we're appealing the sentence. And then when we got into open court before the Lord, before the judge, yeah. then because we know it's in open court and we know everyone's there. Then we laid out, these are what you've done wrong. Here's, un here's how it's unlawful. Right. Because it would have been refused, I believe. And, and, and even, even, so I, I say, yeah, he let me out because he had to. Right. Because it's written in the records. And it, all, everything they'd done was put, put, put forward. But after he heard how unlawful it was, yeah. he still sent me back to prison for two weeks. Right. And on the very last day that he had, because he was allowed 14 days, on the 14th day I was released. I should have been released from court. So, I wished that I'd done a podcast with you immediately after your 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 prison experience because that in itself was a whole a whole podcast. So, take me back to what happened. Why why did they put you in prison most recently? So they they put me in prison, which they said was for contempt of court. Yeah. They said in the media that I pleaded guilty. Another lie. Yeah. I never pleaded guilty. Yeah. So imagine being me. Yeah. I've been taken off the streets for no crime. I know the laws. I went on my own training courses with Kingsley Napoli. Kingsley Napoli are the, one of the, the best legal firms in London. I paid for myself to do a three-day course with them so that I could understand contempt of court. Okay. And I'd done that because I had the previous brush with contempt of court at, um, at, Canterbury, Magist at Canterbury Crown Court. And what did you, what did you done wrong in so Canterbury? So basically Canterbury, I wasn't aware that you can't, you can't stand on court property and video. I know you can video in court, but you can't actually video on court property. So anyway. if you stand on the steps of court, if it's that's contempt of court. So so what did you do? You you filmed on 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 the steps so of the court. So basically, so people know there was a there was five men and they raped a young child, and she was asking for directions in their kebab shop. She was drunk. She yeah. got lost. She asked for directions. They took her upstairs, five of them, and they gang raped her. I read this story. Yeah, and then they were given bail. So I heard about it, and I thought they can't really be in given bail running the same chicken shop yeah they were so i went straight down to the chicken shop yeah. there's a pizza shop triple seven pizza they just changed the name yeah, yeah. i looked through the windows uh, i went to the business next door I said can you tell me if you've seen any young girls do any school children go in that premises next door she said yeah yesterday there was loads of girls in there yesterday so then in my head i'm thinking hold on a minute these men have already raped all of their dna was found on the girl five of them yeah, yeah. It's not like it was an allegation. They had their DNA on a young, vulnerable child who had been gang raped. Yeah. One of the men, whilst on bail, left the country. He was from Afghanistan, a migrant. Yeah. He's gone. Yeah. So then I'm. So I, in my mind, I'm going to make the public in this entire area because this video won't, will go viral. Because I'd already been to the shop. They'd locked the shop, and I'm banging at the door saying, "Open the door." <laughs> so this has already happened. Then the next. So I've waited then for the next morning. And I've gone to the court and I thought, I'm going to make a video with these men's faces on it. Mm. And I'm going to make sure that everybody in the area of this shop knows who they are and knows what they're alleged to have done. Yeah? They're actually convicted now. They're all doing 20 years in jail. So I couldn't believe that a judge could give these men bail to run the same premises. Right. Yeah? So I went to the court and I waited outside. And then the police were aware I was there. So the police come. Now, the judge let the men use the back door to leave court. Yeah. So I couldn't video them. I then videoed myself on the steps yeah. saying all I'm going to do now is go to their house. Yeah? So I'm going to go to their house. You're going to see who these men are. Yeah. But I, then, I then went home to, and at four o'clock in the morning, my door went through. I was dragged straight before the judge for contempt of court. Now, the way they had me was because I stood on court property. Right. That's what I got charged for. Okay, so just, just pause there. So as far as you, you see it, you're doing the public a service the, the, what, what i see there is that the judge yeah has messed up major yeah she has put the british public in danger yeah she has risked other people's daughters yeah. and, and the threat against them by these men yeah she's let them run the same business yeah and that was what i was going to shame her for now to prevent me shaming her for that she had my door raided and i was dragged before her the next morning Fine. and i was I, and I, I was um convicted it cost me twenty thousand pound i was going to jail so the QC's come because Ezra Levant got me two, the best QC in the country. Yeah. The QC come and said, she's sending you to prison for this. Trust yeah. me. Yeah. You, we're going to fight now and we're going to get you a suspended sentence. So he thought, they got me a suspended sentence. Now after that, so that I understood the legalities of court, yeah. which I didn't. This yeah. was all new to me. Yeah? yeah. I haven't done journalism courses. This was before the course that you went on. Yeah. yeah. So then I went and sat 
willingly, I, myself, funded myself. I've done a three-day course with Kingsley Napoli to understand the rules of the court. Yeah. What you can say, what you can't say. To be honest, I was calling them in this, in this Canterbury case, these Muslim rape, child raping paedophiles. Yeah. Now, they weren't yet convicted. They got convicted the day that I was... So you court. should have said alleged. Alleged. But I didn't right. know any of this, yeah? Yeah, yeah. And okay. I was angry. Okay. Yeah? Now... I didn't jeopardise the trial because they've all, the, the trial had already finished. When I went there, the trial had already finished. They were waiting for their verdicts. Yeah. So then comes a case, and I'm looking at it, and it's in Leeds Crown Court, yeah. and it's for Huddersfield, yeah. and it's for 33 individuals who have been alleged to have been raping those young children. Yeah. There's another 21, 50, 50 men anyway, yeah. 50 men from the same small area are up in court. So I've gone to the court, and bearing in mind that I know my lead. I know the laws. I know the rules. Yeah? The judge has put a report restriction on the case, which is absolute nonsense. Yeah? It, this is the limiting of the freedom we have to talk about these issues. Right. Because under the law, yeah. which I'd read before I went, and I checked everything, mm. under the law, the judge has no power to put reporting restrictions on any information that's already in the public domain. Now, everything I read and everything I said outside that court was already in the public domain. It's from the BBC News website. None of it was hidden. It's all out there. Now, that I was arrested outside that courthouse and I was taken to the police station. I was arrested for breach of the peace. Just a made-up charge. Yeah. Nothing to do with contempt of court. They took me away from the area. People thought I was being arrested for breach of the peace. Then they drove me from the police station. They didn't even check me in the police station. They then drove me round the back into the court, put me into court. I said, I want to speak to my solicitor. They would not let me have my solicitor. I was not allowed my solicitor. I was then put before a judge, not asked to plead guilty or not guilty, not actually told what I'd done. I kept asking, what is it I've done here? Yeah. No one told me what I've done. Yeah. And he sentenced me to 13 months in prison, there and then. And I'm then sitting in prison thinking, what the hell has just happened? Yeah. And then I'm seeing the news report saying Tommy Robinson pleads guilty. And I'm like, I haven't pled guilty. I didn't even get asked if I was guilty. That's one of the reasons I was freed from prison was because right. I wasn't asked if I, to give a plea. And I wasn't told what I'd done. So I imagine that if there were kind of uh, left liberal lawyers listening to this, they would say, look, we have a justice system which is designed to bring to justice people like these, these Muslim gangs when they, when they groom and rape young children. And what you, Tommy Robinson, are doing is interfering with the process of justice. And, no, yeah. Yeah. What, what I was doing was reporting the same as any other reporter. It's just that I'm Tommy Robinson. Yeah. That's it. Because actually, in the court transcripts, one, the reason why they, they'd scrapped my most recent trial and put it back to the Attorney General, because I was arrested on the Friday. I was put straight in prison. The 10 men who the judge had heard two months' worth of evidence from, ten, from I think, up yeah. to 10 young girls who had given, st given wi witness statements of what they've done. Not yeah. one girl, not one little allegation. The judge had heard all the evidence. Well, he allowed the 10 Muslim men to go home on the Friday afternoon. Right. One of those men has still never been found. He was last seen leaving his house with his suitcases. Yeah? So the judge throws me in jail, lets the rapist go home. One of them's absconded and, and escaped justice. Yeah? Then, when he comes back into court on the Tuesday, and I've got all the court transcripts because I went through all of them, the judge is then put, it's then put to the judge that the, the trial has been prejudiced by what I've said, by the Muslims, the Muslims lawyers are saying this has to be kicked out. The judge and the head of the CPS, yeah. both say in court, we've now watched the entirety of Mr. Robinson's video. Yeah. There is nothing he says, even if heard by the jury, that could have prejudiced this, this trial. Who, who said this, sorry? The, the, the judge, Marson, yeah. and the head of the CPS. Okay. So this is on the Monday or the Tuesday yeah. when they're back in court. So when, they, when it's put to them, they both say, we both now watched the video in its entirety. Yeah. Nothing he said or done right. could have prejudiced this trial. Yeah. So then that straight away, why are you all saying I risked the trial? I didn't risk the trial. Right. Right? No, I, all I done was report. Yeah. I said they're innocent until proven guilty. I said alleged rapists. Right. Because you'd, well, you'd had your media training. I'd had then. my training. Okay. So, I've done everything within the law. But yeah, I still spent... And just a, for contempt of court, it's a civil matter. It's not a criminal matter. Right. It's civil. Yeah. yeah. I was sent to prison as a criminal. When I was put in prison, the difference is, is quite big when you're in my, my situation. And as a civil prisoner, you, you can spend £50 a week. And 
for contempt of court, you can only go to a open prison. It's an, a category D prison. Right. You know? I was not held under those conditions. I was moved. I was put into a prison as a criminal. My, my, my spends were £12.50 a week. Also, you have a visit every day as a civil prisoner. I was not. I was allowed one every three weeks. So then I was moved from HMP Hull to HMP Onley. Onley has the biggest Muslim population of any prison in this country, yeah. for a CCAT prison. Because of this threat to me, after moving me from the safety of Hull to the danger of Onley, because of this threat, they then said they have to keep me on solitary confinement. I was then kept on solitary confinement where I had £10 a week, £12.50 a week to spend, and I didn't see anyone for two months. I didn't see anyone. My door was opened and it was shut for my food. And that's it. And then I couldn't eat the food because in... So people, if you understand how prison... When you're in prison, the prisoners cook the food. This is a majority Muslim prison. Yeah. All of the people working on the kitchen are Muslim. After one day, all I'm getting is, enjoy your dinner, Tommy, enjoy your dinner, Tommy, shout it down. I had to keep my window shut because I'm getting excrement, shit and feces thrown through them. So none of that had to happen. Like that, none of that. I was fine in HMP Hull, but they moved me to that situation. Who's, who's they? The prison service? Well, even when I got to HMP Hull only, I said to the governor, what have you done? Why have you done this? Like, I am under no doubt at all that they would have got me in that prison had there not been a mass free Tommy movement outside. And I think that I had to weigh up the situation and thought, if he's killed in this prison, there's going to be riots. But you see, I find this shocking. Um, I mean... It, as an allegation, uh, I mean, to think that it might be true is, is, is horrible. But you're, you're suggesting that the prison service basically wanted you bumped off. I am, I'm, I'm suggesting that nobody in this country could sat, give me a logical reason why I, Tommy Robinson, would be moved from the lowest Muslim population prison in the country yeah. to the highest. There is no reason why you would do that. It's not the prison that I should go to. I should be in an open prison. I was, I was moved against my categorization, against all the rules, and put in a prison where I'm in danger. And then because of the fact I'm in danger, I'm then held on solitary confinement, where for 30 minutes a day, I'm allowed out to walk around on my own in a little square. Now, when I walked around in that square, that square was surrounded by Muslims who are constantly fucking screaming and shouting abuse and threats and what they're going to do to my family. In that prison... I then just, and I think all of this is done intentionally. I'm then, I have the, the, the prison guards come to my door at say 9 p.m. and say, where's your wife? I'm sat in a cellmate that I've been sat in for the last six weeks and I haven't been out of it. Yeah. The only time they let me out for my, for my exercise, which isn't, is against, is against the, law, the laws as well. Every, just so that people understand who don't understand how prison works. When you're in prison, you get out of your cell at half eight and you get put back in at half five. At half eight in the morning, you go to work, you have a gym, you play football, you have all these things you do. You yeah. play snooker, you play pool, you play badminton, you've got playstations. You've got all of this in prison. I didn't come out myself at all. I was only allowed out for 30 minutes on my own when the rest of the prison was on lockdown for lunch. So when everyone else is on for lunch, they'd open my door, they'd walk me through the prison into an exercise yard on my own, which I'd walk around on my own. Yeah. Only time they do that is half 12 to half one. My children are at school. My wife worked in the school at that time so I couldn't even speak to my family at all now that's not within the law or the rules that's absolute so all of these things all play a part on your mental state yeah well, on your bed yeah. yeah and then they, then they come in at nine o'clock and said where's your wife I said I haven't spoke to my wife how am I meant to know where my wife is or how am I meant? and they said okay well there's intel she's going to be attacked with acid and I'm sat there like so these are the guards these are the guards so they've come with a letter They've come with a letter because the police are there. They've come with the police. There's in, we need to know where your wife is. She's in danger. That she, we have intel she's going to be attacked with acid. Imagine trying to sleep after that. They've then knocked on my mum's house and my wife's house. They've told my mother and my wife, we have intel you're going to be attacked with acid. And that's it. They just leave them with this, with this official warning. Now, were they going to be attacked with acid? Or is this all to play on someone's mental state because it worked I bet it worked and it worked in that sense of not eating um, the not being able to contact your family not 
the, th the constant threats anyway, the, the worry you have anyway when you're in prison about all these things. And then, obviously, people saw when I come out of prison. You look terrible. I hadn't fucking... I hadn't, you looked as a really, I hadn't been out really of a room in two and a half so, months. So, okay, you'd lived on, on a diet of... One tin of tuna. Five tins of tuna a week is what I could afford. Uh, is that all you ate? Yeah, five tins of tuna a week. That's it. Is there enough nutrition and do you know what? in the... No, there's not... No, I, so I've had all my reports done when I come out. I got all my... I was um, malnourished, completely malnourished. Yeah. I begged. I've got the letters. I wrote to the governor again and again and again saying, I need more money. I have to be able to buy bloody food. That's all I'm asking for is to buy food. Yeah. And, there's, and also telling them there's plenty you could do to make my time here more bearable. Just get me out in the gym for an hour. Yeah? Just let me do something. Get me out of, this, out of this cell that you're locking me in, forcefully locking me in. Yeah. I'm not willingly being put on isolation because that, what they tried to do, they put me for a week in the block with no TV, with nothing, yeah. just, a, just a blue mat. And then they said, well, we can move you to a better cell, but you have to self-isolate. Where you sign a piece of paper saying, I'm isolating myself right. because I'm scared. Right. I said, I'm not doing that. And they goes, well, we'll put you on the wing then. So I said, put me on the wing then. That's what I want you to do. And they goes, but you're going to be in danger. I said, well, I'm in danger every time I open my front door. I said, I didn't put me here. You brought me here. You must have done all these safety checks before you brought me here. You would have had to do all of these safety checks because of who I am yeah. and the fact of what's going on outside this prison, outside the prison gates. I'm aware of tens of thousands of people marching. I'm aware of 600,000 people signing a petition. I'm aware of all of, these, all of this pressure happening outside. You've done all these checks and you've still brought me here. So there's no, there's, no, there's no other explanation, which is why I, will, I want to get the prison service into court. Well, because I was going to say, as I, I remember reading at the time, and the prison authorities are completely denying that any of this happened, aren't they? They're, they they are they are flat out contradicting your my account. My solicitor, my solicitor was just like, even my solicitor said it's unbelievable. When my solicitor come, I meant to have two hours legal visit. They brought me in for thirty minutes. Right. They left him sat there, they, and, and this come up in if you read the the when we went to the the high court. Um, this all come out in court. My right. said, we haven't even been able to get to see him. We've right. been trying to get to see him. Right. They leave us outside. We've seen him for 30 minutes. So do you, So does your solicitor, your, your barrister, think you have a, have a case against the prison service? Yeah, completely, yeah. Right. Completely. But How did you stop? Did you have any reading material or anything in your cell? I read letters. This is the other thing. It's like, I've, I received... This much, this much letters every single day. Yeah, from supporters, and people what, around the world. And what were they saying? Such a beautiful thing to. Um, it was let. It was really to see how emotionally it affected them. Was quite made me realise Jesus, this is big. Right. Because I had people write to me saying, like, "I'm not political. I've never voted. I've never wrote a letter to someone." And here I am writing to you. And I will be, I'm getting emotional even thinking about it. I will be, I will be at any demonstration for you. And all of these things from people saying how outraged they were with what had happened. Yeah. How outraged they were that this could happen in Britain. And do you know the, the saddest thing about this is you could be taken off the streets unlawfully in this country as a journalist, because I was acting, I was working as a journalist. Yeah. You could be taken off the streets unlawfully. You can be thrown into a prison cell. You can be held in solitary confinement against all laws and legislations. And you can do that with the full support of 650 MPs and every single journalist in this country. Because not one of them spoke out. Yeah. Not one of them. Yeah, would... No. If this would have happened in, to someone in Russia, eh? if a journalist would have done this in Russia, the British government would have made a comment. People would have spoke out. Yeah. They all rallied behind their same lies. Because I read, so many people wrote to MPs and I read the MPs' response. It was the same. Every MP said the same. So it was obviously a, 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 group, a group message to, to send back out was that I had risked the trial, lie, that I had broke the law, lie, that I had pled guilty, lie. Yeah. All lies. All proven now by the yeah. highest court in the land. Yes. This is, this is what, going back to my original point <coughs> about how bloody annoying it is um, having to defend Tommy, you know, the toxic Tommy Robinson, is that um, nobody else is doing it. Nobody else is... I'm, I'm really astonished that there's no... There's, there's not a single MP, I don't think, which is... You, OK, you've got um, Lord Pearson, haven't you? Lord Pearson... Yeah, yeah, there's no MP, though. No I've, MP. And I've just read then... I've just read here... Um, comments from another MP 
MP Damien Collins, chairman yep. of the Digital Culture, Media and Sports Committee, says, I believe YouTube must also now ban Tommy Robinson from their platform. Doesn't give reason, doesn't give why, doesn't no. give anything I've said. It's just they want you gone. They well, want it, me it's, gone. It's like, it's like all, being against war or in favour of peace. You know, hating, to, hating Tommy Robinson. It's easy. Is, yeah, yeah. It's easy and it doesn't get anyone's backs up in their own little circles. And I generally think that the sign of what's happened this week, for me proves I'm doing something very I'm doing something right they genuinely fear me I'm a young working class kid from Luton Town yeah. that has the establishment absolutely terrified mm. I'm doing something right now when they removed me from in fact when I started the English Defence League there was three dawn raids on my house in six right. months they thought that pressure would stop me it didn't yeah. when they arrested my pregnant wife they thought that would stop me it didn't when they put me up on fraudulent charges of mortgage fraud and use my wife as leverage to make me plead guilty. They thought that would stop me. It didn't. When they locked me in prison, I was violently attacked and locked in a room with Muslims and had all my teeth smashed in. They thought that would stop me. It didn't. When, when they removed me from Twitter, they thought that would stop me. It didn't. When they removed me from PayPal, they thought it would stop us. It didn't. In fact, every single one of these things have made us more driven and more focused on what we were trying to achieve and also gained us massive support. When they remove me from Facebook and Instagram, do they think that will stop us? Of course it won't. A hundred thousand people have signed up to my website in the last 24 hours. It's not going to stop me. It's not. In fact, we are now the face of free speech. That's what they've created. They have created yes. that the battle for free speech is now headed by Tommy Robinson. Yeah. It's now, you, they are making a martyr out of me in a situation that everyone feels oppressed and everyone feels silenced. It's not going to stop us. It's going to make our job harder, but our job's been made harder for 10 years. Yes, I mean, you're, not, you're certainly not the only person to have been ostracised by, by social media, are you? I mean, there's Lauren Sutton. So, so, um, social media now, though, is, is more than just social media. It's part and parcel of, of life. Oh, it in, is, in, totally. In, in I mean, the era we're in. Yeah. It's like you, they're deleting your life. They're yeah, you've been un, unpersoned. You've been, been airbrushed. Airbrushed from, from society. Yeah. You've been kicked from society, which, the, again, the telling point is you're kicked from society for committing no crime. Yeah. You've done nothing that anyone can pin on you and say a word, say what, anything you've done that's wrong. Yeah. Other than lies. Yeah. And now, essentially, th what this is about, Panorama, Panorama were working on their hatchet job and it was due to come out the second week in February. Yeah? What, what do you think it was going to get on you? Oh, I have no idea. But we already seen that they were trying to entice and lie about sexual allegations. Yeah. So I believe this was their ultimate. When they tried to put me in prison, it didn't work. When then they took my PayPal, it didn't work. <coughs> this would have been their. This would have been their. <coughs> this would have been their documentary, using Panorama because Panorama is the most established and and believed to be the truth. Yeah. They'd have used that to absolutely destroy my name to the entire British public. Yeah. And I believe that the twelfth. I believe that what just happened with social media would have happened as anyway, and I would have, like now. All these when Panorama does come out in a week's time or two weeks' time, and it's about me. Yeah, I have no platform to even counter their lies. I can't even come on and say no, that's lies. Like, yeah, I can't even correct it. When MPs are lying about me now daily, I usually would have just gone on Twitter and corrected their lie, and the public yeah. would have seen my correction. Yeah. Now they've taken that ability away from me. So what are you going to do? I am going to build an app. Yeah. Um, I'm going to build my own social media platform, probably. I'm going to... I'm looking at all these things now, because if I hadn't started all these legal cases, yeah. I'd be in a position to do it. Yeah. Because I've started these legal cases and I've got these battles coming up, they're going to cost me so much money. Yeah. I now need to work on getting the finances for an app, not just for an app. I will build a studio to have my own show. Yeah. So I will do a news show, whether it be weekly and end up being daily, that will be shared with people. And people will still share it. Yeah. It will be shared through social media, it will be shared through WhatsApp groups. I can press a button here and message now over 600,000 people. Can you really? Yeah. Their email addresses. So no matter what they try. That's a, that, I mean, uh, politicians would, would kill for that. Yeah. Well, that, they, that's what I mean. So whatever they try, whatever they try, yeah. essentially people will be more angry. Those 600,000 people, they're not people who have fraudulently got their email addresses. They're people who have willingly gone to my website yeah. and signed up. Okay. So and, I, and, I, and I knew this day was coming anyway. 
I knew this day was coming. It might take me a couple of months now. I'm, I'm looking at the possibility of holding a mass rally against the tech giants in London um, with other people who have been censored and kicked out. You had your man from Google kicked out in America uh, for wrong think. With, with these sorts of individuals and holding a rally in London, and I might use that rally yep. to launch my new platform if I can get it done in time. I'm just looking at all of that now. But essentially, I, at times over the years, I've felt defeated. Yeah. Well, I, I bet. Uh, it's not, now's not my I mean, eating, eating tin tuna yeah. in, in a solitary confinement, you must have felt about as low no, as you. I, I did and I didn't because, do you know what? Do you know the letters I got every day? Yeah. It was really like, really, like I was, in fact, when I come out of prison and this is, I was a mess, man. I tried to go to take my children out and I, and I went and I had to get out of there. Yeah. Like I was psychologically damaged. Still am suffering. You, I have to say, you still look pretty haunted. I, yeah, I, well, yeah. I, essentially, I was diagnosed with post-traumatic stress disorder. Um, all f from the effects of it, which is such a, it sounds like such a weak ass thing. I felt so weak even yeah. admitting that I was having problems. Yeah. When I come out of prison, because it sounds ridiculous. How can I, how can I openly say I've got post-traumatic stress disorder when that's what people get at war? I've been locked in a room. It's very different, yeah. And I felt an embarrassment to even try and say and try and talk about it. But at the same time, I knew I wasn't right, and I still and I, and I'm I'm getting I'm I'm fitter and fresher now than I've been. Um, well, yeah, I, I, you you you've had a, a healthy a healthy breakfast. I've I've run five k this morning. Have you? Um, and I'm, I'm out every morning. I'm up at six every morning. I'm training every day. I'm not. Um, so essentially, when I say I felt defeated, I feel more focused now than ever. Yeah, and I, I and I do, and I feel fresher. Did you? Could you take any exercise in your in your cell? No, that's what I begged them for. I begged them for it. What? So, so are there no exercises you can do when you're stuck in a cell? Did that you see the video of me in prison? No. You took a video. How do you do that? Then? I think you allowed phones and things. A prison officer. No. Yep. So uh, that, that's that's what I wanted to ask you. Was anyone nice to you? Did, did, I didn't see anyone. Oh, I see. So yeah. in Hull, it was absolutely brilliant. I was fine. I sat there. When my, when my family come and spoke to my family, I said, listen, I'm fine. It's all I care about. I'm yeah. going to come out of here alive. Yeah. Yeah. I, I was worried about... But I, I realised in Hull, from the prison staff, from everyone, I said, I'm, I'll be fine. I'll come out of here. You know what I mean? After two weeks, they shipped me down to Only, and then I had a completely different mindset. Then generally, I thought, I'm not coming out of here. I generally thought, in that first... I, I, I'm weighing up why they've moved me here. Yeah. The prison have moved me too. I'm not coming out. You thought it was like a like a bad movie, and you were. This is it. Yeah. In my mind, this is it. I'm not coming out. And then I wrote letters, and I wrote three letters to. Oh God! If I. I wrote letters to my children. Oh dear. Yeah. Yeah. Horrible. Let me just show you this. Because you you have kind of reconciled yourself, haven't you, to to having a horrible end. Oh, that's a hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's un, that's un, but it's not. But I'm ready for that anyway. Now, essentially, I know that sounds a mad, mad thing to say. In the first couple of years of the English Defence League, when bearing in mind, look, six Muslims were caught with guns, bombs, and IDs on the way to kill me. They right. got thirty years in jail. I went to their court case. Yeah. Right. For me, that an order's come somewhere for them to kill me. Right. Right. So, I'm not stupid. Like, if you're a jihadi now, yeah. What's the biggest target if you want a reaction? Well, it's yeah. me. Yeah, it's you. If you want a reaction, that's yeah, what yeah, want. It, it's true, and it, you want a particular kind of reaction, and you've got to, you'll get a reaction that, that the authorities won't necessarily. They can't deal with it. They won't be able to deal with it. And part, no. partly, I sat there and said, when I was in prison, I sat there and said, um, when I saw the reaction to my imprisonment, I, it actually made me very happy, because I used to question myself that. If I was killed tomorrow... Yeah, would it matter? Would it matter? Yeah. Would anyone care? And in fact, after Lee Rigby got beheaded, I said, no, it won't. No one will care. Life will go on. But then when I saw when I was imprisoned, yeah. I then thought, no, nah, if, if I'm killed tomorrow, mate, the government better keep me safe, mate. Because if, if I am murdered, the blood's on their hands. But horrible... Your, your wife and kids, I mean, I... Look... I, I've got a long-suffering wife, but yours is is even more <laughs> suffering. How how do, how does she cope? Oh, I'm looking at the video now. Mm. 
Right. You say. You, is that your cell? No, is that your exercise yard? No, that's my exercise yard. Yeah, so, so that's the say, block. I was going to say, it looks a nice. <laughs> And you had half an hour there. 30 minutes a day in there, on my own. So I just walk around that cage, you'll see. Like, I'll go for a walk now, say, so join me on my daily walk. Do you do press-ups or anything, or, or anything? That you do you know what, I was so just weak. Were you? Yeah. Um, I didn't have... Is the, I wanted to, I wanted to get in the gym, but I just couldn't get out. Are there enough nutrients in, in a tin of tuna? No. So I've got all my blood tests, and my blood yeah. tests show that I was malnourished. Yeah, just, but you can. I've got all the letters I wrote to the prison begging them for more money. Just yeah. saying, let me. Sp I had my own money. Let me spend my own money. Let me buy fruit. Let me buy things. Yeah, they just didn't let me. But I suppose they were bound by the laws. No, because the, the laws actually, which we made them aware of, is that I'm allowed to spend fifty pound a week. I'm a civil prisoner. They said, no, you're not. Not 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 what the co the court has sent you here as. Right. That's accepted when it got to court. Oh yeah, he sh he's a civil prisoner, not criminal. He shouldn't have been in there. Right. He shouldn't have been held in those conditions. Right. So they've held me against my conditions, against my categorization. When you put my crime through the system, I should be in an open prison where I can go home at weekends. Yeah. I'm locked so up. if there are any, I know, I know I have one, at least one special, special Muslim friend listening to this, this show, but if there are any other Muslim listeners, what, what, and, and they're probably shit scared of you and they probably think you're evil and dangerous. What's your message to them? The, the, the freedoms that you enjoy and you love yeah. are the freedoms I want to protect. So essentially what I say to, in fact, I was in a gay club recently yeah. and the, I had these three Muslims come up to me as uh, pink punters in Bletchley. Brilliant club. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and and it, that's, that's where I go. If, I, if I'm on a night out, I go to a gay club because I usually don't get hassled or I'm not under threat of violence right. by Muslims. Right. In other clubs I am. Yeah. So um, these three Muslim kids come up to me and I said, like, they're giving me shit. And the dorm guy, I said, listen, what I want to oppose the ideology and the mindset I'm going to oppose would yeah. execute every single person in it. Every gay person in it would be killed. Yeah. Yeah? You would be punished for having that double vodka and coke that you're having now. The freedoms you enjoy and what you love about this society will be taken away. And that's what I'm opposing. Yeah. By Islam. If you like it or not, it's by Islam. If you want to live under Islamic law, which is what we have many of them calling for, which is what I want to oppose. So I, I, I'd welcome... Um, Muslims have nothing to fear from me. I am opposed to the implementation of Sharia completely and unapologetic, unapologetically. Um, but individual Muslims, I'd say it again. You see, if I was walking and, and I saw someone disrespecting a Muslim female, I'd be the first person to intervene and, and, and sort that out. And I have been all my life. If I was even a lady in the burqa, I'd still open, hold the door open for them. Yeah. Muslims are people. Islam's an idea. It's my God-given right to oppose that idea in every way possible, especially when you see how much hatred and violence and, and um, is within that idea. Yeah. <coughs> so that's it. Muslims have nothing to fear for me. Yeah. I, weirdly, last, this week's podcast, or last week's, by the time people are listening to this, I've got the, um, the Imam of Peace. Oh, he's great. He's, um, yeah. Have you seen our, our chat? No, I haven't seen oh, your I chat. Met him. We had an, I met him and interviewed him and... Um, it's the same again. He's just, it's just so, it's not hard. He's just like, I, do you know I spoke to him before anyone knew who he was? I was speaking to him when I was leading the English Defence League. I was in regular contact with him. Mm. So that's why people have this betrayal. I've met, I've met imams across this, this country who've come down, travelled down, I go for lunch with them, I chat to them. Because I say, look, I don't hate individuals, but I'm not going to sit by and watch mm. as Islam becomes a growing force in this nation with the badness that comes with it. So, yeah, what ultimately is your, your game plan? Because obviously we, we know that tactically what you're doing is um, you're finding different ways of, of, of confrontation, you know, with the, with the legal system, with the, um, you know, by, by, by suing I, people who, who've, who've... I'd say that if Brexit, say if Brexit's delayed, yeah, yeah, I'll be a member of the European Parliament. If they delay Brexit, which they're going to, I think. Yeah. Then uh, I'll stand in election. If they don't... If they That's don't. interesting. Do you know what? I was thinking on the way here, I was wondering whether that would be the route. Because I don't think you've got a chance of becoming a British MP, have you? Or oh, have I you? think I would. Where, who would you stand for and where would, where would your seat be? I'd have that discussion with you, Kip. Yeah. But I'd stand in a town or an area that's close to a, a town plagued by Islam. Yeah. And then once you move a little bit north of that town, yeah. where all the people who have been affected already have moved to. Yeah. I'd look at all of that. I'd look at all of that. 
I have a love for the northeast. Right. <laughs> I just, um, I don't know. I'd, essentially, they've removed my me from social media. Yeah. I saw how upset they were when I met with Lord Pearson in the House of Lords. And when I watched their response that day and what they called me in Parliament, I just thought, you know what, one day I'm going to sit amongst you. And if I sit amongst you, if anyone in this country wants to really rock the political boat, mm. put me in there. Because I won't hold, I won't, I won't lie, I won't hold back. I'll speak openly and honestly about how they're, tri they're, they're all committing treason within that parliament uh, against his people. It does seem to me that, that, that the citizen journalist thing is not going to carry you much further. I think you're, you're right. I think probably... Uh, but I, I've, been, I've been saying anyway, this movement has to be politicised. It has to be politicised. Yeah. It has to be. And essentially, we, the citizen journalist thing will... I've got two free documentaries I'm, I'm, I'm about to start. Yeah? yeah. These documentaries, I believe, will be the most watched documentaries in this country once right. I've done them. I'm going to do a documentary on Rotherham, on Telford and on Oxford. I'm speaking... I'm going to speak to the families, the victims. Do you know, as a 12-year-old girl, they put a claw hammer up her when she was pregnant. They took her out to a field to abort her baby. They stuck a claw hammer up her. Now, how many people actually know that? And how many people have heard it from the family? Because that's what I want to do. I want to make, you a, make film. a You make a good point there, actually, that, that we, we don't hear very much about no, you just read the it. victims. And, it, and even if you do, you read it. So I, I'm going to speak to the victims. Yeah. I'm going to speak to their dads. I'm going to speak to their nans. I'm going to speak to their brothers. I'm going to speak to their cousins. I'm going to speak to all of them. Yeah. And then part of, that, part of those videos, what I'm going to do, which is probably why they're trying to get rid of me, yeah. but it won't matter because these videos will go big. Yeah. And what I'm going, then going to do is I'm going to find the people within power who let it happen. Right. And the whole country's going to know who they are. Right. So if they think they're sitting enjoying their little pension and having their cup of tea whilst girls are still dying, two weeks ago a girl, 30 years old, died of a heroin overdose. That is still the effect from grooming in Rotherham. Yeah? Right. Yeah. So people are still dying now. Yep. Telford, all of these cities. And what I'm going to do is those individual videos, which will be Telford, Rotherham, Rochdale, whatever cities, I'm going to put them together into a feature long film called The Rape of Britain. Yeah. And when I air them, like I did on Saturday yeah. in Manchester. I'll air them in Rotherham City Centre on a 50-foot screen. And Oh, my goodness. And I'll use their, the tech giant's own rules. So if I do that, mm. then trust me, hashtag the rape of Britain will trend worldwide when I do that. Now, so you may get me off of social media, but you won't no. stop, you won't prevent the publishing of my work on social media. Yes, is it technically... Is, is Silicon Valley's control of the media space so great that you can't get a platform? Or are there ways no, through? No, so, so th this is a way I've already thought about it. So I, I will now spend months, instead of doing videos daily, I'll spend months doing a real in-depth in professional, like my The Rape of Brit, the, the Panodrama is a professionally made documentary that looked professional. It could have been on any, any TV show. Yep. Yeah. That's what we're going to do next. Right. And we're going to tell the stories. And when you hear it from the dads, when you hear it from the mums, when you hear what's happened to those children, yeah. when you hear the failures, I want to find the police officers. Yeah. The police officers who let it happen, I'm going to find them. I'm going to find them. I'm going to find the... And, and, this is, and it doesn't matter what they say or do because I'm going to do it. Yeah. So, and when I do it, I will put together the most emotional, hard-hitting documentaries on this issue yeah. that anyone's seen. And as I said... The plans, all the time I knew they didn't ignore panodrama, but I knew that when it goes on, with the build-up to it, this is coming. With the trailers, this is coming. With the 50-foot screen in the city centre and 10,000 or 20,000 people watching it, yeah. you can't stop it. Where, where can people now see panodrama? So panodrama, you can watch on YouTube. It's had half a million views in the last 24 hours on so YouTube. So YouTube have, you, have not yet? Not yet. And that's that's going to happen though, isn't it's it? It's going to happen, yeah, of course it is. But that's had, that's had tw uh, half a million views in the last 24 hours. Yeah. Panodrama has on YouTube. Half a million? Half a million in 24 hours. How many ha has it had in total? Well, it had one half million in 24 hours on Facebook, but they deleted it. Right. So oh, I see. Yep. It's, so it's had half a million views since it went up 24 hours ago. Um, and then, but people can find me at www.tr.news. And the first thing you come to, it's a work in progress because we, we, we weren't ready for this, but we're working on it now. The first thing you'll come to is the, is the Panodrama link and then just an email link so that whatever I do so when I build my app when I build my new website when I build a show if I do a show you know like Infowars in America yeah I might build something like that right 
where people know if they want to see what's going on weekly in, in the UK, log on to tr.news and you'll see the shows. And you could sell tins of tuna to raise money. That's it. <laughs> to, be, to be honest, um, I know I'll get public support. Yeah, yeah. I, no. know, I know the sense of feeling within the public. Um, and for me, this is just, a, yeah, it's, a, it's another hurdle put in the way. But as I said, sometimes I felt defeated. I'm not, I don't feel defeated. Do you think you're always going to be this pariah figure? Do you oh, think? No. Yeah. No, when it swings, it will swing so quick, so fast. That's interesting. Yeah. It already has with the public. Well, so you That's already happened with the so public. You, so you think that there will come a time when two or three mainstream politicians start... Because, I mean, really? I, I really would like politicians to listen to the three podcasts we've done. Yeah. I mean, I don't think... I mean, maybe I'm an ignorant fool. Maybe I've just been deceived by a, by a devious, dangerous, no, it's nasty man. Like, it's when you say... It's when the negative things people do say about me. There was recently something, that I'll speak about myself, something the Sun Media run, which was a WhatsApp group with 15 of my friends in. Yeah. So it's a WhatsApp group. Four of them are Asian, probably four or five of them are black, the rest are white. Right. We're all friends. Yeah. You know? And in amongst our WhatsApp group, we have humour and banter. Yeah, yeah. So the, the Asian boys were always calling us dirty honkies and white boys, yeah? Yeah. And this is the, the humour amongst... Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, yeah, and yeah. they're saying, you, Bans, yeah. white scum, don't brush your teeth. And this is... And I'll put all this up. Now, what, what they've done is someone within that group sold my sold videos of me chatting shit drunk... That's, and what, what they expected that to do was to destroy me with me being a pissed up idiot. I was rapping. I used to, as a youngster, because I used to hang around with all the black boys. You know? Oh, you were Eminem. I, I, I was, uh, yeah, I was rapping. Can you rap? I can do a little bit. I'm not going to do it. Uh, so it's t I, I was rapping and it was, um, one of the lyrics was move over because me coming through. This is what me am I going to do. I'm going to punch you in the head or kick you in the face because I'm the king of the whole human race. And that's what I used to rap as a kid. Yeah, yeah. And roll, as you would. As a, as a kid, yeah. yeah. And it was yeah, like rolling with, and I used to put my initial same but as a as a youngster because i hung around because the culture i was hanging around with all my mates were black lads rapping yeah yeah now i changed human race to islam race yeah, yeah. i am the king of the whole islam race like drunk pissed up yeah, yeah. do it done a video whacked it in the group message yeah. then we were bantering about israel and palestine because a couple of men there on palestine side i was put i put up a little video saying look if there's a war tomorrow i'll be out there fighting for israel yeah. yeah and in fact i might just start that war at the end of tonight yeah because yeah? i was on the because i was drinking and partying now they thought that that would ruin me this is how out of touch they are with british society right most people every group of lads from my background has a whatsapp group and everyone knows the crazy stuff that happens in those whatsapp groups yeah so it, if anything it just humanizes me more with people as being oh he's just like one of us He's just like, I'm, and the truth so, is, my appeal to people is that I'm not a politician. And I felt, to be honest, I felt embarrassed when I watched that video of me being drunk. I, and um, that's why I'm teetotal now, training every day. But I felt embarrassed right. of that. But at the same time, I don't claim to be anyone or anything I'm not. I will make more mistakes as I move forward. Will I learn from those mistakes? Yeah, I will. And, and that's it. And, and I had a message that someone said, if you want to lead people, you've first got to be able to lead yourself. And, and, and sometimes I've struggled to lead myself. Yeah. Because of the, it is pressurizing. It yeah. is real. Do you know what I mean? It, it, it's not easy. And I sit there. So it's trying to deal with being who you are. So then you're in a position to lead other people. And I now am more committed than ever to not let people down. It's, you just, your WhatsApp group, you yep. say you've got, you use the word Asian. I mean, presum these are presumably Muslims, no, Pakistanis, Pakistani, yeah, two origin. Pakistani, two Pakistanis. So I, I made a comment as well about a taxi driver. And I said, a little, little, pa little Pakistani who drives, drives a car. Yeah. What the context doesn't show yeah. is that we're humouring and bantering amongst my best friends. Well, presumably, well, presumably uh, uh, if they're in the WhatsApp group, they are your mates. They're, you, best, they're, 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 yeah, they're real mates. mates. Yeah, they're real mates. I think people... But then, but then when the, the way the paper took it, yeah. they just cut and edited little things without showing any context, like the Israel thing, without showing all their comments about Palestine and then just have me doing... I actually made a video where I'm not religious. Yeah? One of the things I said, which they didn't use, I don't know why they didn't use it. One of the things I said was that um, the, reason I'd fight, the reason why I'd go out there and fight tomorrow is because the Jews are the chosen children of God. Yeah. Yeah? And I'm, we're in a constant wind, argument and wind up amongst friends, yeah? and we're having this banter. But when it's, they, they, they took out all their, one of the, one of the footage was, one of the Asian kids was walking along Seek Island. He put a video in right. of himself Seek Island saying, fuck you. Yeah? Yeah. That's, that's what he put in. Yeah? Yeah. But it was amongst friends yeah, yeah. and it was humour. Yeah. But then when they took it out, the son run this big story on me and they cut all of the rest of it out and just had my little words it, at different times yeah, over yeah. the space of two weeks. Yeah. 
in a, and it could have been a lot worse. Trust me, it could have been a lot worse with what, with what goes on in that WhatsApp group. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And in fact, you know, Panorama. Yeah. When we done Panorama, I said, uh, I actually because I now all I do is make a joke of everything they do. So I said, there's one person I really need to thank. It's just going to be very emotional, but it's one person who needs a thank you. And I just played the um, played the leaked footage because one of my friends clearly sold me out. Yeah. One of my friends has took money from yeah, the Sun yeah, News. Yeah, 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 yeah. Which is disappointing. The Sun doesn't like you. I, I read an editorial by them the other day, sort of congratulating I don't like the sun. Facebook. On I don't like the Sun, and neither does anyone else. But it's but it's puzzling because the, the Sun. I, well, I think the Sun is is good on a lot of issues. I mean, it, it's it's right on Brexit, for example. Yeah, but if you listen to the journalist. Someone rung up the Sun, asking them about me, yeah. and they recorded the conversation with the journalist. And he said, um, "Yeah, well, I don't like Tommy Robinson since he beat up his girlfriend, his pregnant girlfriend. Just a lie, complete lie. Yeah. This is the lie that I'm taking the Sunday Times to court for. I've never, ever, ever put a single hand on any female in my life. Yet the Sunday Times run a big story saying Tommy, the woman beater. This is what they've done for years. Yeah, ago. I'm now taking them to court. That this will be categorically proven that they're lying." But these lies all, all fester up and all melt up and then they all used as ammunition by other journalists then to spread. So you were talking about the, the, the new um, app and, and media site and you are talking about the possibility if, if Brexit is delayed of becoming an MEP. Yeah. Um, but ultimately, what's your, what's your dream? I mean, what, 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 do you, what, are you, what are you here for? What, do, what are you suffering in this way my for? My dream would be... My dream would be that this whole problem was sorted and then I don't have to talk about this ever again. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, yeah, yeah <laughs> I just go crack on and be a normal dad. To the so kids. the problem would be <coughs> what? Okay, so you obviously don't want gangs raping girls. You don't want hey, look, Sharia law. The reality is this problem is never going to get solved. It, it, there's no, there's no, pe there's no like easy solution to this problem. We have, the Islamization of the West is real. Yeah. And uh, it has to be stopped. It has to be stopped. Yeah. Now, whether it be a leader like Salvini getting in power. Salvini five, six, seven years ago, yeah? Yeah. Was the fringe person they're trying to make me now. Right. Five, six, seven years, change of turns, change of tactics. He's second in command of Italy. Yeah. With the change of the mood of the country. This country's primed and ready. And it's only going to get worse. When people realise that the issues I talk about, it's only going to get worse. Yes. Now, if there is a political revolution... If there was a revolution, if there was any of these issues that are going to happen, then um, all these people who are trying to delete me and erase me from society, you just better believe I'll be, I'll be, I'll be at the helm of it. I think that's a good, that's a good way of closing the podcast. Thanks. Thank you very much, Tommy. Cheers, man. Cheers. Bye bye.